Hello and welcome to the Brazili Round magazine. Round 5 was action packed, so get ready for some real excitement. Fine arts. In the Maracanã we had the full package, a comeback from one side and then the other, an art festival in the Brazili Rao. A true masterpiece from one team, a stunning beauty from the other and, oh yes, a victory for Red Bull against Flamengo in the last few seconds. It was a similar story in the Allianz Parque where Palmeiras also pulled off a last minute win against America with William Bigodji the man in charge. Creative block. Hernan Crespo and Sam Paulo remain winless after going down to rival Santos in the weekend's derby, while Internacional could only draw at home with Ceará. Magnum opus. Leaders Atletico, Panale and C won again, are still unbeaten and have a game in hand. This one is packed with fabulous goals, great performances and much, much more. Senegal gave Munyans the hint. So listen up and stay tuned to our Brazilirao magazine. There were high expectations for the match in the Maracanã in the tussle between two undefeated teams, Flamengo and Red Bull. Coach Rogério Senni repeated the lineup from the previous games with young striker Rodrigo Muniz up front. Mauricio Barbieri had to make do without star player Claudinho, who was with Brazil's Olympic national team. The first clear opportunity was from the away side. Alinha received on the left, went past the defender and delivered a powerful shot with his right. But Diego Alves saved Flamengo. Then came another chance for Red Bull. Alinho sent the ball into the box with a free kick, and Adelan finished with a sensational back heel straight into the top corner. Brack and Gina were ahead with a true work of art in the Maracanã. A masterpiece at Maracanã Stadium. Adelan got on the end of Artur's corner and attempted another tricky shot, but this time the ball came off the post. Flamengo's response came a few moments later. On 14 minutes, Virginio found Muniz. The forward then forced Clayton into a fantastic save. Then a loose ball in Red Bull's box caused problems. Mikael got the best of it and tried a shot. He missed the goal but found Rodrigo Muniz, who then slotted home. An equaliser in the Maracanã, and Rogério Senni was thrilled. Muniz wanted more. The youngster won the shoulder barge and shot from outside the box, but Clayton denied the second with his fingertips. Another ball from a corner kick found Munez, but this time his shot was off target. Red Bull went back on the counter-attack. Artur went on a run and had a go, but his effort went wide. Munez almost scored a second. He beat the defender and headed well, but was denied by Clayton. The new boy wanted more. Matozinho crossed from the right, and Munez hit a sensational bicycle kick to put Flamengo ahead. What an absolute stunner from Flamengo. A shot worthy of the iconic Maracanã. The bicycle kick and he scores! A golaço at Maracanã Stadium. Rodrigo Muniz gets his brace. The game continued in spectacular form. Soon after the goal, Red Bull charged forward. After a good move, the ball ended up with Artur, but he was blocked by Felipe Luiz. The ball hit Gerson and Eric Hamiris beat the defenders to head home to level the score. Flamengo went all out to try to win the match. Arau got a touch, but Bruno and Hiki headed over the post. An incredible chance missed by Flamengo. That miss proved costly. Artur received on the left of Van Kriegel, and the substitute headed home to score the winning goal. An impressive win for Red Bull in one of the best games of the season. What a fantastic match in the Maracanã. The defending champions went down to their first defeat, but do have games in hand. Red Bull celebrated the result as they continued their impressive run to the start of the season. 
Palmeiro's faced America Mineiro on Sunday morning in the 200th game at the Allianz Parque. The Greens were hoping for another win to enter the top four, while strugglers America were in search of their first goal in the championship. The first clear opportunity was for the away side. Giovanni forced a great save by Jailson with a free kick from the right. Then there was another chance for the Rabbits. Giovanni received the ball from Rodolfo. He took control and tried to finish. The ball grazed Jailson's post as it went out. A one-sided match so far. Ademir then had an opportunity, but Jailson was there for another big save for Palmeiras. Giovanni put Jailson to work once again, but this time the effort lacked strength. An easy save for the keeper. Palmeiras finally got their first opportunity. Rafael Vega recovered a loose ball and took a chance. But Yori saved a dangerous attack from the Greens. Victor Luiz got it all wrong, and Giovanni took full advantage with a shot that was blocked by the defence. But the midfielder got a second chance and didn't waste it with a first time shot that tricked keeper Jailson. America ahead in Sao Paulo. But Palmeiras came back only a minute later. Scarpa received on the right and crossed into the box to find William, who put the ball into the back of the net. A quick response for the Greens in the Allianz Parque. In a dispute for the ball, Henan tried to clear the danger but ended up making contact with Rodolfo. After a VAR revision, the referee gave the penalty. Adamir stepped forward, but Jailson guessed right. The keeper in top form to deny America from the spot and the follow-up. Scarpa delivered a low cross for a 50-50 ball between Luis Adriano and Yori. The striker got the better of it, but failed to find the target. Palmeiras kept the pressure on, Davison received a cross, and his header came very, very close to giving his team the lead. But in the final few seconds, Rafael Vega passed to Luis Adriano. He saw William entering the box and pulled it back to the player, who finished with a plomb. A beautiful goal which gave Palmeiras an exciting comeback win in their own backyard. The Greens took all three points after America dominated the first half. Better things from the away side, but after five games, they're still without a win. Internacional came up against Sierra in the Berahio looking for better days in the competition after suffering some hard losses. That was also the case for Sierra, who just had one win in the Brazilian realm. Despite having eight players out with Covid, Sierra still managed to put on a decent performance. Though it was Inter who looked dangerous early on. Patricky found Yuri Alberto with a long pass. Gabriel Gias was there as cover, but keeper Vinicius Machado came flying out and took down the Inter man. After a VAR revision, the referee gave the penalty. Edgy Nilsson, with his usual finesse, converted, sending the ball straight into the top corner. 1-0 Inter after an excellent shot. Fernando Sobra went running on the right and passed to Gabriel Gias. The right back tried to reach Saulo Mineiro in the middle, but Edgy Nilsson handled the ball with a sliding tackle. The referee initially gave a penalty, but after watching the replay, inexplicably reversed his decision. A controversial moment in the better heel. A tour received on the right and crossed. Yuri Alberto dived to reach the ball but missed the target. Almost a second for the home team. Just before half time, Sierra got the equaliser from a free kick. Lima went for technique rather than power and curled the ball onto the underside of the crossbar. A brilliant goal in the Berahio. After the interval, Sierra took the offensive and started pressurising Inter. Saulo found Mendoza, but the Colombian couldn't steer his header home. Then came another opportunity for the visitors. This time Saulo fired a stunner from outside the box. Sierra coming close to going in front. The match had turned in the wayside's favour as they continued to push forward. Vina got on the end of a free kick but sent the ball over Daniel's crossbar. Sierra looked dangerous with their speed on the counter-attack. Elia received a perfect long pass from the right and crossed into the box. Mendoza was left one-on-one -on -one with the keeper but Daniel pulled off a superb stop. Honours even at the end but new coach Diego Aguirre knows he will have his work cut out. For Sierra, this was a decent point away from home, but they'll be feeling it should have been three. 
bit arrival, Santos and San Paolo clash swords on Sunday evening in the Villa Belmiro. The manager had attacking options, Mourinho and Caio Giorgi, available for the derby. Trickle coach, Hernan Crespo, was without the inspirational Danny Alves, who was injured. The game started with a lot of fouls and not that many chances. San Paolo got their first opportunity from one of these free kicks, but Ed Air's shot went wide. Then it was Santos' turn and they didn't waste it. In his debut in the starting 11, Camacho delivered a stunning long pass to Gian Motta. The midfielder trapped the ball nicely and found Mourinho. The striker finished in great form to put his side in front with a brilliant goal. Santos began to take charge of the match and created more chances. On the 32nd minute, Marcus Guglielmi dribbled past the defenders and set up Caio Giorgi for a first time shot that went close. While things were going well for Santos, they were going downhill for São Paulo. Key player Luciano picked up an injury and was stood by Rojas. To make matters worse, Lizero got it all wrong trying to pass back to the keeper. Caio Giorgi took full advantage and left Gabriel Pirani clear to make it 2-0 in the Villa. The second half began in the same vein. Caio Giorgi almost scored the third from a free kick, but was denied by Thiago Volpi. In a rare attempt from the away team, Igor Vinicius battled forward and thought he'd got a breakthrough, but the attempt was ruled out for offside. With 62 minutes on the clock, Mourinho almost delivered a work of art in the villa. The number 11 sent a bolt of lightning from a long way out, but the post prevented Mourinho from scoring his second of the day. At the end of the 90, there was bags of stoppage time and the Tricolor started creating more after Benitez came on. The change almost brought dividends, but Felipe Jonathan came to the rescue. Final score, 2-0. The result left Santos in a more comfortable position, but no wins in five for San Paolo has set the alarm bells ringing amongst their supporters. Bahia and Corinthians went head-to-head -head in the Pituasu. The Tricolors, Maestro, Rodriguinho was back and the former Musketeers man was keen to impress against his ex-club. The San Paolo side was short of players, such as Luan and Gustavo Silva, so veteran striker Jo returned to the starting eleven. The first half lacked creativity and real chances on goal. The only opportunity came from Mateus Vital. The midfielder moved forward with purpose, but there was no end product. Vicinio then got into a good position, but finished poorly. The move seemed to be over, but VAR alerted the referee to a possible penalty. After reviewing, the ref decided it was nothing, but the Musketeers were furious with a call. It didn't look like it was going to be the Lions' day. In the final minutes, Oscar Ruiz made a good move on the left and found Tony Anderson. He cushioned the ball with his chest and struck a powerful shot, forcing Cassio into a brilliant save. And that was that in Petuasu, a scoreless draw between Bahia and Corinthians and a result that left neither team happy. Fortaleza took on Fluminense in one of the home side's toughest matches so far. The Lions came into this one at the back of three wins and a draw. Fluminense's record was two wins and two draws for the team led by manager Jorge Machado. With 14 minutes on the clock, Flues, Nene, created the first opportunity as the midfielder threatened Fortaleza with a free kick. Five minutes later came Fortaleza's response. In a training ground move, Edison got hold of the ball and finished with a decent effort. The best opportunity came on the 37th minute mark. Edison found Abaji in some space. The forward tried to beat Marcus Felipe, but ended up slotting the ball a little too wide of the post. After the break, Dabaji had yet another great opportunity. Pomerino stole the ball and set up a shot, but again the striker failed to hit the target. The pace then picked up. Nino got a touch on Nene's header and Caio Paulista was there to steer the ball into the back of the net. 1-0 Fluminense. <laughs> But the Lions didn't take too much time to get back into the match. Iago Pikachu received a through pass inside the box, crossed it to the middle where Hobson had the easy job of equalising. 
Fortaleza began to control possession, but had difficulties finding spaces and breaking down through his defensive line. The match ended one apiece. A decent result for both teams as they remain undefeated in the championship. Atletico Paranaense and Atletico Goianiense were both unbeaten as they went into their match in the Arena de Baixada. The Hurricanes were at full strength and looking confident after beating Gremio in their last outing. Despite drawing at home 0 0 with Fortaleza, coach Bajoca kept faith the same lineup. The game had barely started when Thiago Eleno tried to find Hitchard, but Gabriel Baralias nipped in to steal the ball and put the Dragons in front early on in the match. A mistake at the back that led to the first goal conceded by Atletico Paranaense in the Brazilian Real. At the end of the first half, right back, Marcinho got heavily involved in an attack and delivered a perfect cross into the box. Big signing, Mateus Barbi popped up at exactly the right place to fire home the equaliser. Keeper Fernando Miguel rooted to the spot as the ball flew past him. In the second half, the Dragons missed an unbelievable opportunity. Hurricanes goalkeeper Santos was forced to clear with his head, but the ball hit Nathaniel. The left back came close, but failed to punish the hosts for the mistake. The home side began to look very shaky at the back. João Paulo stepped in and found Zé Roberto, but the striker put too much power on the shot, and again, the Hurricanes were let off the hook. The team from Goiás were better, but it was the home side who struck. Left back Abner combined with Christian, who then beat Fernando Miguel for the winner. Match over in the Arena de Baixada. Atletico Paranaense made it four wins out of four and still have a game in hand. Atletico Goianiense went down to their first defeat in the campaign, but were unfortunate to come away from the match without a point. Juventus in sport locked horns on a foggy Sunday night in the Alfredo Giacconi. Juve were looking for their first win in the competition at home. Sport Hasifi already had their first victory, but needed to pick up some points to stay away from the relegation zone. The first clear opportunity came for Juventus in the final minutes of the first half. Guillermo Castillo took his chance very well, but Mayil Sam produced a top draw save to stop Juve. Sport came back with Sabino, who took advantage of the rebound and shot from deep outside the area, demanding a brilliant save from Marcelo Carne. In the last minute of the first half, Paulinho Mussolin found Rafael, but the defender headed poorly and sent it over the crossbar. Back from the break, the game struggled to get going, but with eight minutes remaining, Mateus Jesus got involved. The ball finally fell to Matteo Pesciotto, who battled to prod it forward and into the net for a priceless goal. Sport had one last good chance before the end. The move started from deep. Patricky tried to make things happen, but Everaldo couldn't hit the target. A scrappy win for Juventudi, but they won't mind. Sport's up and down form continued. In the closing match of the round, Atletico Mineiro were aiming for the top slot in the competition. In Gallo's way was a stubborn Chapecoense who were in desperate need of points. Despite several attempts by Hulk, the striker lost the battle against keeper Jean Paolo. The number seven left the pitch at the end of the game with a lot to say to the officials. But let's rewind and see how the game panned out. And believe me, this one was a cracker. On 10 minutes, Hulk shot from outside the box but missed the target. He then hit the crossbar with a strong header before the defenders cleared the danger. In another move, Gallo's driving force dribbled past the defenders and finished with his right, but the ball went wide. Hulk did reach the net with this one, but after a good exchange of passes with Joran, it was again off target. When the player got the angle right, he was denied by Shappi's goalkeeper. A great move by Arana, an even better effort from Hulk, forcing Juan Paolo into a fantastic save. If it wasn't going to be Hulk's day, it was up to the supporting cast, and Cheche played his part to perfection in Belo Horizonte. Johan set up the midfielder with precision. Juan Paolo went for it, but couldn't reach the ball. Atletico 1-0 up. At the other end, it was Fernandinho who led the attack for Shapi. He had a one-on-one -on -one with Everson, but failed to dribble past the keeper. 
the number 11 participated in nearly every attack by the away side and smashed the ball onto the post with this one as the white and green search for an equaliser. Inevitably, Fernandinho was involved in Shappi's goal as he was taken down in the box by Alan. Referee Hadolfo Toski Marquez used VAR to call the penalty, which was coolly converted by Havanelli. One each in the Mineral. Hulk reappeared at the end of the game and complained about a penalty he thought he should have had, but the tackle by Ignacio was adjudged to have been fair. The game ended in a tie and frustration for Hulk, who left the pitch looking a little green around the gills. An exciting and entertaining match finished at Lechico Manera 1, Shapico NC also won. Time now for our top three goals. In third place is this beautiful free kick in the Berejillo in Porto Alegre. Sierra midfielder Lima converted the kick with perfection. A superb hit with just the right amount of power. The ball came off the crossbar before it went into the net. A beautiful goal that guaranteed Sierra a tie and also Lima's presence in third place in our top three. Saturday night was truly fantastic in the Maracanã, where Adelan performed this work of art in the home of Brazilian football. Red Bull's right back got a brilliant back heel that sent the ball straight past Flamengo's Diego Alves. This amazing goal is worth seeing again and again. Adelan, who celebrated the move and his team's win, can also celebrate his award for the second best goal of round five. And we stay at the Maracanã and the same game for our winner. Flamengo's young striker, Rodrigo Muniz, hits his fabulous bicycle kick that gave no chance at all to goalkeeper Clayton. An absolutely amazing goal. A wonderful strike in a stadium that staged two World Cups. Rodrigo Muniz certainly made a name for himself at the Maracanã and this year's Brasile Rao with his outstanding effort. The best save from round five came in the Maracanã in Rio de Janeiro. Flamengo's young forward, Rodrigo Muniz, received a pass from Vicinho and dispatched a stunner. But goalkeeper Clayton was there to perform a spectacular save, denying a shot that could have made a difference to the final score. Clayton leaped and touched the ball with the fingertips, but from this angle, it's even more impressive. For his absolutely amazing save in the Maracanã, Red Bull Bragantino's keeper Clayton gets our nod for the best save in round five of the Brasile round. <laughs> Flamengo lost the game against Red Bull, but right back Matheusinho guaranteed his appearance in our magazine with the best dribble of the round. Red Bull's Quenjo even had trouble staying on his feet after this embarrassing nutmeg, Matteo Zinho, author of the best dribble of the round. Let's take a look at the best players and the manager who stood out in round five. In goal, we've gone for Jailson of Palmeiras. At right back, Adelan from Red Bull Bragantino. The two centre defenders are Gil Corinthians and Luan Perez of Santos. At left back, Abner from Atletico Paranaense. In midfield, Gustavo Scarpa, Palmeiras. Lima, Sierra, Gabriel Pirani, Santos. The front men, Artur, Red Bull. Rodrigo Muniz, Flamengo. William, Palmeiras. Our man, Guiding things from the bench is Fernando Giniz of Santos. The win for Palmeiras over America Mineiro was only possible because of William. The forward was superb and scored two goals for the team led by Portuguese manager Abel Ferreira in the Allianz Parque. For the first goal, 
He struck the net, giving no chance to the keeper. His second came in the closing seconds of the game, and he had the power and confidence to snatch the points for the Greens. William the Conqueror, the best player of round five. Five rounds in, the Campeonato Brasileiro looks like this. Atletico Paranaense top dogs, and they have a game in hand. The Hurricanes are closely followed by Fortaleza and Bragancino. Palmeiras make up the side in the top four, Atletico Mineiro and Fluminense, five and six. Down towards the relegation zone, we have Cuiabá, São Paulo, América Mineiro and Gremio. A new commander, part one. America Mineiro have announced Wagner Mancini as their new coach. Mancini was at Corinthians early this year and takes over from Liska, who left after just three games in the competition. Mancini has penned a deal until the end of the season. A new commander, part two. After showing the door to Spanish coach Miguel Angel Ramirez, International have brought back Uruguayan Diego Aguirre. He commanded the Colorado in 2015. Aguirre has signed with International until the end of 2022. Reinforcement on the way. Midfielder Felipe Silva is a new face at Chapecoense. The 31-year-old played for four seasons at Sierra and will stay with Chape until the end of the year. Round 6 of the Brasil round starts on Wednesday, with two teams from the top of the table, with Flamengo and Fortaleza clashing swords in the Maracanã. São Paulo face Cuiabá in the Moron B. On the same day, Red Bull Bragantino come up against Palmeiras and Atletico Goianiense take on Fluminense. There are six more matches on Thursday. Corinthians Sport, Sierra Atletico Mineiro, Chapecoense Internacional, Gremio Santos, plus Bahia against Atletico Paranaense. That's it for this week. We hope you're enjoying our coverage of the toughest, most exciting league in the Americas. And we'll be back next week with more action from the Brazilian Round.